tropical storm Andrea bringing a tropical downpour right now to Tampa at the airport. We've got rain falling and winds gusting to just over 20 miles per hour. We're in this for the least the day anyway. The long haul here, we've got rain lined up here spread into the Tampa St. Pete area. Quite a soaking expected, not just in Florida, but all the way up the East Coast here. Our hurricane specialist, Carl Parker, is tracking the storm, and he has the latest for us this morning. Carl, hi there. Hi there. Well, we are awaiting a new advisory from the National Hurricane Center within about an hour. And as of the latest advisory, the storm is still a mid-grade tropical storm. It's a 60-mile-per-hour storm, now moving north-northeast at 14 miles per hour. We expect an increase in forward speed today. We do not think it's going to get much stronger than it is. And you notice here that it's uh, still sort of discombobulated. you got a lot of moisture wrapping around this side, but then drier air feeding in here. The storm is still being sheared, and that shear is going to continue through the rest of today. Now, let's talk about uh, what's going on with the winds right now. And I want to show you our exclusive wind stream graphic. And that center of circulation is now basically south of Panama City. And uh, this is, uh, you can see the stronger winds here being indicated by these little purple icons. So there's your center of circulation right there. Just north and east of that, a buoy has picked up winds gusting to 51 miles per hour. So certainly there is a lot of strong wind that is now largely offshore, but as more and more of that heavy rain comes onshore, it's going to transport more of that wind down and into northwestern parts of Florida. That's going to be through this afternoon and into the evening. Now, farther north where you see the winds coming out of the southeast, there at the surface a lot they've been coming more out of the south and that change of wind direction and height is what has led to uh, tornadic storms and that's going to be an ongoing concern today now we'll take it into 5 p.m and so here's the center of circulation probably just about coming on shore at that time and you see the winds coming out of the south there and that's going to be piling up the water in a very surge vulnerable area here in northwestern florida with a very shallow continental shelf shelf and that's why there could be water level rises of a few feet as that storm comes in. Then by tonight, center of the storm moving up into north central parts of Florida, right uh, along the I-10 and 75 corridor. Winds getting very gusty in Jacksonville, probably sustained 20 to 30 miles, but gusting to tropical storm force. Starts to get gustier up here in South Carolina as well. And through the overnight hours, we'll see a peak in the wind around Charleston. There too, about 20 to 30 miles per hour, but gusting even higher and then making its way up into the Carolinas. Yeah, uh, rail threats also uh, tomorrow as the center of the storm moves on in. So here's a look at the storm surge for forecast. You can see two to five feet there. Again, in the Big Bend area of Florida, one to two from Tampa Bay and on southward, and one to two feet from Flagler Beach all the way up into Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. I want to show you the radar picture now, and you can see this big, massive rain that's now coming in the western part of the state. Uh, things have cleared out a little bit in the eastern part of the state, but there are some new cells popping up north of Lake Okeechobee. We'll want to watch those for possible tornadoes. And tremendous rain coming in here to southwest Florida. The flash flood guidance indicating that we would need about three to four inches in general in three hours time to cause flooding and so flooding is probably going to be isolated but we certainly could see that in some of these more intense bands that are now working on shore and uh, as Jim mentioned this is going to go on for a very long time several hours uh, right through the rest of today we'll see that heavy rain coming up through the north central part of the state. Jen, over to you. Carl, thank you. And then next is up the eastern seaboard. And we've got two things going on here as we track this thing here up along the east coast. We've got a front moving east, plus we've got Andrea at the same time that's going to be tracking up towards the northeast. And the front uh, is going to help steer that along too. So here's what's going to happen. We've got the rain today, Florida. We're going to see some of that rain spreading into South Georgia. Overnight tonight, especially into Friday, we've got the Carolinas now in play. Combination of things going to give us that risk of heavy rain and some possible storms. Isolated tornado risk there from the eastern North Carolina up to southeastern Virginia. The rip current risk is going to be high as well right here. But this is Saturday, and already we're tracking what's left of Andrea up through New England, plus the front coming through. So by later Saturday, you'll see some improving weather. But until then, we've got a very rainy forecast up the I-95 corridor. This is Friday at noon, and you know, we're in summer vacation season. We've got a lot of travelers. The roads will be busy. Very wet travel conditions for you on Friday right through 6 o'clock. This isn't a Saturday morning. You can see the rain on its way out, but still into New England. You're feeling it. Eric. For an update on some of the damage that we have seen already this morning from Tropical Storm Andrea. This is out of West Palm Beach County here. You can see some trees coming down, some power lines going down along with that. This may have been due to a tornado that spun up 
Another picture here, also in West Palm Beach County. Uh, in general, most of this tornadic activity has stayed west of downtown in the beach areas, but even still, a threat will linger all day. And so trees come down, that's a threat to life and property. So we watch that carefully. Indeed. Heavy rain actually can, you know, be a trigger.